Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting Nike review by George. Today we're going to talk about the Manix Lightweight by Spyderco. This one comes with the S110V steel. And um, if you've seen any of my previous Nike reviews, I'm going to skip the first page because it's going to be uploaded in the video description section of this video. And now let's get to it. Overall, the knife has very good ergonomics and um, the build quality is also very excellent as well. Uh, the, the size of the knife is actually, for the size of the knife, it's very, very light uh, because it's mostly FRN uh, or just plastic material. Uh, in, in, in detail, uh, the, the steel here is S1, uh, S, sorry, uh, CPM S110V. Uh, if you didn't know what, what sort of style that steel is, it's basically 2.8% carbon content and with a high chromium um, content as well. So it's got a very, very good edge retention as well as the, um, as well as the uh, corrosion resistance. And the blade comes with a thumb hole which, uh, which can be improvised as a immersion knife uh, wave opening system. So if you put your um, zip tie or a a like a zip tie around this thing, around the hole here, you can you can put the knife into your pocket, and as you open the knife, when you draw the knife from the pocket, uh, the zip tie will get caught in the pocket, and uh, suddenly you got your knife open and you're good to go. Uh, the knife uh, has a full flat grind. And uh, that's uh, very very good for for slashing and um, and the cutting cutting power. And um, the round hole here obviously reduces a lot of material as well as weight. There is a very big belly here on the knife. Uh, it's it's reasonably big, probably not that big by spatical standard, but um, the belly here will provide a good cutting ability as well. And uh, the finger toil uh, gives you a very, very, uh, very huge um, set of a finger guard. So in, in that sense, you, you have very good, very good security in your hand. Um, uh, of course, there's a slight jimping as well in like in a plastic fashion. Above the blade as well. Um, the handle, the Spyderco proprietary and ambidextrous ball bearing lock. Uh, this is sort of similar to the uh, Benchmade axis lock. Uh, in a different, uh, what's different about it is that instead of a, a steel bar, you get a ball inside of this plastic cage. So this means you can open the knife and close the knife from both left hand and right hand. Now uh, here's something I come up with. Um, to justify the ball bearing lock is very very good in terms of design. The reason that is here is a picture illustration of the ball bearing lock. Um, as you can see, uh, the ball can inside this plastic cage can go back and forth. Uh, similarly, uh, the axis lock is the same as well. Um, but being the ball bearing inside uh, the cage, uh, it means the ball can rotate uh, freely. And um, because it can rotate, the, the area of wear is, is massively increased to actually um, make, the, make the locking mechanism more durable in time. Whereas comparing with liner lock or monologues, the bearing surface or the wear surface is uh, focused on that particular point. And uh, for back lock, it's fo focused on the, the back and the, the, and the front here as well. So two small surfaces. Similarly, if uh, you have a spidical compression lock, the, uh, the wear is uh, focused on the pin here as well as, the, as this surface. So um, more, more wear surface on the ball bearing lock means you get more, um, you get more lifetime out of this knife. The jimping on the locking button is actually um, like kind of good for 
sort of like if you go one-handed and uh, the jumping here, so you can somewhat see the, the jumping here is uh, actually providing you some traction. So you can um, easily disengage the lock with, with your hands. And the finger trial for uh, here is very, very large as well. It's kind of like a finger guard. The handle on this knife uh, is it's spider coat's proprietary um, sort of like a volcano sort of like a texture on each one of them. So it gives you some degree of like a control and um, and the uh, basically traction. And that's very nice as well. And um, a very large lanyard hole here is actually ridiculously large. It's almost one centimeter in the diameter. Uh, the light weight of this knife is m much due to the plastic construction on the scales. And um, and there's an ambidextrous wire clip on, on one end, so you can definitely mount it on the other side if you're a left-handed user. Now, oh, and the wire clip also reduces weight somewhat. Um, so for the blade, there's some negative points. Um, I, this, this blade actually didn't come with a, uh, the edge is not bad. Actually, as I just tested just now, it, I don't really know how, um, how it wasn't so good. It didn't feel so good at the beginning, but I think maybe because there was some burr or something on the blade, but uh, we'll do a sharpness test. It's very, very sharp now. Um, so, uh, I'm sorry, that point is no longer valid the first there. And the deployment of this knife, uh, it takes time to get used to. Um, it's certainly not as smooth as the Benchmade Axis Lock, but if you use real authority when you deploy the knife, you can, you can get it right. It took me a while to actually, to actually get the, the right amount of pressure to apply to, to open the knife. But right now, it doesn't feel so, so good. But it, it takes a little bit of wear, wear in. So understand that, please. Um, the handle on, on the knife, uh, there is a screw here on, on both sides. There's, I would suspect, I don't know if this thing has a pivot bushing system as well due to the fact there's a screw on each side. But um, that's, that screw there as well as the pocket clip, clip screw are the only screw you can, screws you can take off from this knife to take it apart. Other stuff are pinned, 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 uh, pinned, pinned, pinned. So you can't actually take a, the knife wholly apart. And that increases somewhat a problem, really, because uh, if you look at this uh, knife into the knife here, I don't really have a torch, but inside there's a lot of um, sort of weight reduction, uh, sort of hollow hollow grooves in there to, to provide weight reduction. And if you get dirty in there, there's probably no way you can get it out properly because the, the, the knife can't be taken apart. So that may be a bit of a problem. Oh, and um, the other thing is the spring here is um, if it does ever break or no longer works for some reason, you suddenly the user can't take this knife apart to fix the knife. Um, Obviously, it's not a full flow through design. There's a plastic backspacer here. And um, the ridges inside this handle I previously mentioned, um, it's very hard to clean if you get dirty. Uh, you can see from there. And um, this, this knife is quite quite wide in the, in the sense, when you look at this, this thing from the thickness, there's probably about a good two inches width in here. Could be a little bit more than two inches wide. Uh, you put it in your pocket, it's definitely gonna occupy, occupy a lot of space and you, if you have other stuff. Um, positive things based on my speculation. Uh, the belly on this knife is reasonably big. Um, so 
um, it should be fairly easy to sharpen it on a bench stone. And um, the ball bearing using a spring is actually a, sort of a good thing because I, I think comparing this with the axis locking mechanism, as we can see here, the spring on the axis locking mechanism, if it does break, it's no longer functional because um, the spring, there's nothing to hold them together if it breaks. But the axis locking, uh, uh, sorry, uh, if the ball bearing lock has a broken spring here, it becomes two weaker springs, which will still somewhat function, perhaps not as well as the normal one piece spring. So that's somewhat a, a bit better option in terms of using springs. And um, there is some, because I've done some research on, on internet before I bought this knife, uh, there were some concerns. Um, some users have reported their plastic ball bearing cage. This is a close up. And it looks like this. Um, so obviously this one is a transparent one and this is a blackened one. Uh, this is where the ball sits. And this thing can break into half if you use it for quite frequently. And you can also see that obviously there's nothing on this end to hold together the, the plastic piece. So it's all gonna be, the, all, the, all the supporting structural material is here. So it's not an ideal uh, structure. And uh, I hate to admit that this knife will, you won't, the user won't be able to fix it if it breaks. You probably have to send it to a spectacle and if they decide to fix it for you, and then you can get it fixed. Um, the, there's a texture on this plastic handle, which feels somewhat kind of like a smooth-ish. It's, it's, if you compare this with the Spyderco Endura or the Delica, the plastic on the Endura and the, the Delica is somewhat more aggressive, whereas this thing has a more smooth and sort of more cheaper looking uh, feel to it. I do not know why. And um, you should probably not use this knife in a very abusive uh, tasks like batoning through wood. Of course, you should not uh, use uh, any knife to baton through wood, especially a folding knife. But because this thing much due to its plastic construction uh, on the handle, it, um, it won't take too much abuse before you break it. So uh, use it only for sort of a like normal proper cutting only. Oh, and um, on the back of this thing is our polymer backspacer as well. So if you do use this thing to just sort of like a, as a hammer impact tool, it may not be a very great, great idea. It just probably would damage the polymer. Anyways, um, this knife, uh, in my opinion, is very well designed, very it kind of like represents everything about Spyderco innovation and um, and the trying new steels. Uh, the S110V is very highly so sought after these days. And, um, but it's sort of overall designed to be a sort of like a work knife. And I don't think it should, I mean, obviously you can use it in a defensive use and uh, you can use it for some sort of outdoor activities like cutting wood and stuff. Um, but I think the primary use will be something like if you do um, cut cardboards a lot or anything, this thing will serve that kind of pur purpose really well with the high carbon stainless steel on the blade and the lightweight. Um, the sharpness is actually quite good on the knife. Uh, this is made in USA, by the way, uh, Colo Colorado. So the quality on the knife is quite very nice. And I couldn't pick anything that I didn't really like in terms of fit, fit and finish. Um, and uh, that concludes my review today. And I hope you enjoy the review and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.